I want to read you out this comment. Trey Matlock said, Hope I'm wrong, but I think he's gone based off his body language answering the questions. It doesn't just stop there, though, because after that question, he was then asked about if Auburn's going to offer him the job, what's he going to do, and here's what he said. Ha, 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 ha. One of, if not the, you know what? No, 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 Scratch that. The most intriguing saga going on in the college football landscape right now at this current moment is Lane Kiffin. The situation going on with him, John Sokolov, whoever the heck that guy is, Auburn and Ole Miss, it's off the charts. Now, if you have no idea who John Sokolov is, welcome to the club, because all I know is he's some reporter that came out with a lie that Lane Kiffin's going to Auburn about two days ago. Well, let me go back on that statement. At least a According to Kiffin, it was a quote-unquote lie. I guess we'll have to wait and see how this all pans out. I've already addressed that. We've already talked about what happened. If you missed out on it, well, I'm not explaining it. You must be living under a rock. We're here to talk about the new stuff going on with Kiffin and what he has said, and he has finally made his decision. Let me make this extremely clear. These words, what I'm going to show you, what I'm going to tell you in this video, it came out of his mouth, not mine. I'm not like one of these reporters trying to predict something. I'm the messenger. I'm telling you what's going on. What Kiffin said in this interview, even though he told us an answer it still seems fishy and the reason i say that is because whenever you see it you'll see what i'm talking about his body language and the way he answers the question something seems off and even the past three or four days when he's been joking about it on twitter have you noticed he hasn't said clearly word for word that he's not gonna take the auburn job it's almost like he's beating around the bush and if you've been following over the situation you know exactly what i'm talking about you kind of get the feel and the vibe that he doesn't want to lie to the media but at the same time he wants to reassure his team because no Nobody's going to look like a bigger a-hole if Kiffin says, hey, I'm not taking the Auburn job, and then a week from now, he gets the Auburn job. However, like I just said, at the same time, he's trying to get his team ready for the Egg Bowl, or at least he was last night. For example, when it was 2006 and Nick Saban said, I'm not going to be the head coach at Alabama, a lot of people called him a liar, but what's he supposed to say? He's the head coach of the Dolphins, and they're trying to get ready for games. More times than not, when these coaches are answering questions, they're just one of these reporters to shut up, because if you don't give them the answer they're looking for, all they're going to do throughout the next week or two is ask you the same question over and over and over. That's what we're seeing happening with Lane Kevin, but finally, he's put into it at least for now. We're gonna talk all about it in tonight's video. It's the only topic we're gonna focus on. All right, Matt, blah, 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 shut the crap up. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Man, oh man, let me start this off first. I cannot wait until tomorrow's games on Saturday. It's gonna be awesome. I hope there's no blowouts. I hope every game from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. the next morning on Sunday, it's close. Last night though, one of my favorite games to watch on Thanksgiving came on and that was the Egg Bowl. Don't get me wrong, watching the Detroit Lions lose on every single Thanksgiving that almost feels like a tradition at this point, but I like college football and it's always fun to see the Egg Bowl. Leading up to this game, I believe Ole Miss was only a two-point favorite and I did pick them to win. But let me get this out there, I wasn't shocked that Mississippi State pulled off the upset. It's not like Ole Miss was some top five team or something. The game itself went exactly how I expected it to. It was going to go down to the wire and whoever made the most plays at the end, they're going to win the game. And oh yeah, I got to talk about this because it just came to my mind. What about Lane Kiffin's son when he was spraying the fire high? Hydrant on the sidelines. That was awesome. Wait, 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 wait. I said fire hydrant. It's a fire extinguisher. My fault. That was cool. That's what college football is all about. But ultimately, Mississippi State, they got the last laugh. They win this game 24 to 22, and I thought it was a great game from both teams. I didn't think Ole Miss or Mississippi State played their A-plus games, but they played their B games. When I was looking at it on paper, getting ready for this video, it was even closer in the stats than I originally thought. I'll show it to you right here. Ole Miss had 335 total yards. Mississippi State had 335. 36. Mississippi State had 239 passing yards. Ole Miss had 257. And on the ground, who would have thought this? Not me. Ole Miss only had 78 rushing yards and Mississippi State had 97. We expect Mississippi State to rush for under 100 yards. That's almost a given. But Ole Miss... Believe it or not, this has been a running team all throughout the season. Really shocked they didn't establish the run game more, but gotta give credit to the quarterbacks in this game. I thought they both played well. Jackson Dart can't really ask him to play too much better outside of a couple bad throws here and there. 30 for 38, 250, two touchdowns, zero INTs, QBR 70, not too shabby. On the other hand for Rodgers, 27 for 39, 240, two TDs, one interception, QBR 27. I think that QBR is somewhat deceiving. He played better than that 27. I already know what the talk of the town was. Ole Miss, they scored that touchdown late in the fourth quarter, and that two-point conversion... Yeah, it was questionable to say the least. I saw everybody talking about how bad of a play call it was. 
I didn't think it was a bad play call. I thought it was bad execution. We see that two-point conversion play work all the time in the NFL. I thought it was a good one to call, but hey, the players didn't execute it. It is what it is. Give credit to Mississippi State's defense. They was ready for it. Ultimately, though, I don't want to bore you too much with the game. State, and they came out there with a win. Big time win for them. Congratulations. It was what happened after the game as to why I'm even making this video in the first place. You know this. I know this. Everybody and their mom knew this. Kiffin was going to be asked about, is he going to take the Auburn job? Is this his last? game at Ole Miss, what's next, and blah, 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 blah. I can't even try to say, man, I can't stand how these reporters ask these same questions and whatnot, because that's their job. I get it. Still, though, just because I get it, it doesn't mean I have to like it. I hate how these reporters ask these head coaches the same questions over and over and over just to get an answer that they want. And for those of you that don't know this, that are probably sitting there saying, yo, why don't they just say no comment and not answer the questions? Well, the head coaches, that's in their contract. They have to report to the media and answer questions. Trust me, do you really think Nick Saban would be answering questions from the media if he didn't have to? No. It's part of their job. Can they say no comment here and there? Yes, but for the most part, they're supposed to respond. I'm not even going to show you this part, but I did find it funny. Kiffin basically attacked John Sokolov by saying this. The fact that you can just write whatever you want, I would do it too, I think, because you are never held accountable, you get to become famous, and maybe you get it right. I would love to know these unnamed sources. If you have no idea what he's talking about, earlier in the week, a reporter that goes by the name of John Sokolov, he made up this... I guess you could say lie because that's what Kevin called it, that Lane Kevin's going to be the new head coach at Auburn. It created this big controversy and mess, and it's how we got to where we are today. That's self-explanatory. Not going to get into all of that, but after that, here is the big question and the big answer. Matt, wrote a clip. Lane, with the regular season over now, do you anticipate being Ole Miss's coach next season? Yes, I do. I feel like that was a court trial where you're like, yes, I do. Okay, so you heard it from the man, the myth, the legend himself, Lane Train. Get your popcorn ready. He's coming back to Ole Miss. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say I don't know. He said yes. I know what a lot of you are sitting there saying, and you probably don't think it's a big deal, but I think it is because all throughout this week, let me remind you, he has never once said that he's coming back to Ole Miss. He's just denied the rumors that he's going to Auburn. And that's why these rumors have continued to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger because he hasn't denied it and he hasn't, well, my bad, he has denied it, but he hasn't confidently said, I'm coming back to Ole Miss. And with him doing that, it's left Ole Miss fans and players in the dark. It doesn't just stop there, though, because after that question, he was then asked about if Auburn's going to offer him the job, what's he going to do? And here's what he said. Lane, let me follow up and rephrase the initial question. If Auburn offers you its coaching position, do you anticipate being Ole Miss's coach next season? Uh, I do. Hmm. Okay, okay. You know, I can't be the only one who feels this way, but he's reminding me of a younger Nick Saban. The way he's acting, the way his mannerisms are, how he answers questions, looking like Saban. And I've told you guys since day one, I said this a month ago when rumors were coming out that he might leave, and I'm going to continue to say it. Lane Kiffin doesn't want the Auburn job. He wants the Alabama job. I've also told you I wouldn't be shocked if he takes the Auburn job, but that's not his main goal. He loves Nick Saban. He loves Alabama. That's where he wants to end up. <laughs> and last but not least, I gotta show you this one because this is just Lane Kiffin being Lane Kiffin. Lane, hindsight's 2020, obviously, but if you had it to do over again, would you have tried to squelch these rumors knowing that they were swirling around? Would, or do you think it didn't affect the team? Um, I don't know. I mean, hindsight 2020, I would have kicked a field goal too if I knew our player wasn't gonna run the pop pass he's supposed to. So that would have, that would help in a lot of situations. I want to read you out this comment. Trey Matlock said, Hope I'm wrong, but I think he's gone based off his body language answering the questions. I wouldn't go as far as saying that he's going to leave just how he's answering these questions, but here's what I will say on that. I'll give you a great analogy on that. When I was in high school, I went on a date with this girl, and I'll always remember it because it was the most fun I've ever had on a date. It was awesome. We just had a great time. I'm not going to go into detail on every single thing we did because it doesn't matter, but I remember hanging out with her the first two, three, four times, and I was like, man, it can't get better than this. This chick's awesome. But and I have a big butt. After that first week, every single time we hung out, not one out of three times, not one out of two, every single time we hung out, she say, are you gonna cheat on me? Are you gonna leave me? Are we gonna break up and blah, 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 blah. Just something along those lines. I don't know what it was. The only thing I can infer is that she told me she thought I was a player and I was just gonna be with her for a week or two and I'm gonna move on to somebody else. And I remember telling her every single time, no, I'm not gonna cheat on you, no. 
I'm not talking to this other girl. No, I'm not talking to these other girls. I'm not doing any of that. And it didn't matter how many times I said, I'm not talking to other girls. I'm not going to cheat on you. I'm not going to break up with you. She continued to ask the question. And it got to the point where she asked that question so many times, it didn't piss me off, but I'm just sitting there thinking, man, Maybe I should just break up with her and move on. That is exactly what's going on at Lane Kiffin. They're asking this dude the same questions over and over and over. Now I'm starting to think he's thinking, hey, maybe I should just leave. It almost seems like all these Ole Miss reporters, they're unintentionally forcing him out. Once again, I understand they're doing their job and they want drama because that's going to draw an attention but Lane Kiffin is sick and tired of it. I've had the same opinion since day one. I'm sticking with it. I don't think Kiffin's going anywhere. I am very curious though. I know this is a hot topic. Let me know your thoughts down below. But uh, I